Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition it's Jumping Kid, Jack to Mame, No Key, Monokatari, brought to us by Asmic. This is a Japanese Famicom exclusive platformer that I've always enjoyed messing around with and figured I'd finally get around to doing a Play It Through for. It's a very simple game, it was supposed to come to North America as Jack the Giant Slayer, but was cancelled before it made it over. It's a relatively simple platformer, being able to jump and fire out your projectile will use on this big rat mini boss right here. Just keep moving away from him as he's slowly moving towards you and keep attacking until he's taken care of, you'll get some health for your trouble. After most levels you have this little bonus mini game that you'll get to play, there's a few different styles of bonus mini games. For this one you have to take out all of the enemies as they come out of the holes. If they're able to get to the end, they go back, and once they get back into the hole, they end up getting the treasure at the top, so you end up having to hit them all or risk losing the potential bonus. It reminds me a little bit of Back to the Future, where you have to like throw out the, the mugs of milkshakes to the different people. Uh, thankfully a lot easier than that, and something that you don't have to complete. There are a few power-ups that you can end up picking up. Unfortunately though, you end up losing your power-ups anytime you end up taking damage. In a game based off of Jack and Beanstalk, there's of course a lot of levels where you're climbing the Beanstalk itself, just working your way up to the very top. You're able to pick up beans that end up increasing your power, but you also end up getting springs that increase your jump. At the top, you have to fight this frog. Just keep attacking from a distance. If you get on the same plane as it, on the same level, it will move a little quicker. This is something that's common with a lot of the bosses that we deal with in the game. But just keep being persistent and take them down and moving on to the next level, which is pretty much more of the same of what we just did. I'm going to take the right path here and work my way up. Watching out for a few enemies along the way, though sometimes it can be difficult to not get hit at least once, especially with the enemies coming close off that screen. No boss at the top here, just enter inside of the door and move on to the next level. One thing that's a little annoying is when you're hit, you are invincible for a second, but this also includes being able to pick up items. So while you're flashing from invulnerability after taking damage, you cannot pick up items, you gotta wait a second. There we had like a little side area that allowed us to get higher up on the beanstalk. Thankfully, the game does give you a pretty good amount of health, and it's pretty challenging just because of the amount of enemies. It's one of those games where you want to keep moving, don't hesitate for too long. Here we have a giant frog, you can watch out for its tongue, just stay on the left platform, or the right one, whichever one you prefer, and just jump up and attack until the boss is taken care of. Here we have another bonus game, this time taking out snails instead of rats. Next level, we are heading over to the right as we are in the clouds now, as you can see. Gotta do some tricky platforming along these clouds. Be careful not to, of course, fall down below into the big pit.
drop on down here and you have a little bonus game. That, that was already the end of the level. Just move back and forth and collect all of the beans as they are shaken by the big rat at the top. This little minigame I end up finding, I think, the easiest of the group. As the next level begins, choose the right of the two bean socks to work your way up. Be careful, there is, of course, a large amount of enemies coming at you. If you get a spring, be sure to pick it up, because it'll definitely help you as far as jumping up this beanstalk. Keep a hold of it for as long as you can. Sometimes it's easy to make a mistake and miss a jump here. Just keep working your way up. There's some moving platforms you'll have to deal with. Try not to fall back down. When you are able to get two springs, you have a really high jump that can clear a lot of platforms at once. For the next boss, we're going to stand on this platform here and attack from below. We can also get up onto the platform with the boss when he's far away and then attack. But you got to be careful when attacking because every time you do, he jumps. So you'll end up missing a lot of your attacks. It's a little bit of an annoying fight, but once it's taken care of, we have another bonus game. Blasting more enemies as we move up and down on the beanstalk. The next level is fun. We're actually descending in this stage. Here we have all of these rainbows that we have to uh, deal with as we work our way down to the bottom. Short little area, but fun nonetheless, and afterwards you have another bonus game collecting more beans as the rat shakes them from the clouds. Just a strange kind of overall experience that this game is, and one of the reasons why I want to show it off. Back to ascending up the beanstalk here. Move your way up between the platforms. At the top, we have another little mini-boss. Thankfully, it's a very easy boss to deal with. Just stand on the platform above and keep firing. Jump over it when it gets close, but very easy overall to deal with. After the boss is taken care of, we're moving on to the next bonus game, another one of the ones with collecting the beans. The next stage has us climbing up this mushroom-like part of the beanstalk. Just move yourself between the different mushroom caps. You have to use, like, the branch here in order to kind of get up a little higher. Especially if you don't have any upgrades. At the top, you have a boss to deal with. Get on the top platform and stand on either the far left or far right. Jump over its projectiles if you can tell when they're about to come at you. But just keep firing at them. It's a very easy fight. 
Now for this bonus game, you have to fire out at various items as they're rotating downwards. If you hit a skull, it's game over. So usually I gather a few items before then going after one of the skulls. Next up is another one of these levels where we're working our way around the cloud platforms. There's a giant pit again below, so be careful of that. Work your way on top of the ship and then over to the right, jumping between the cannons. I went down here to get a little extra health, but ended up losing it before I even got back up, which is one of the risks you take sometimes going after health in weird locations. Thankfully though, short area and we're at another little bonus game. Same thing as before, just gonna hit the end though, just so we can move on to the next level. Now we are inside of the castle, the giant's castle. This is broken up into several areas. We're gonna start off immediately going down into the next screen. Then head over to the right here, watching out for several enemies. Thankfully, when you hit an enemy, they do flash for a second, so you can go through them. Here we have a mini-boss. Wait for them to dive down, and then jump up into the air, and attack them. So basically, you want to wait for them to start diving, back away a little bit, or move away a little bit, then turn around and jump in the air and fire. You'll have several of these fights we get to do in this area, so you'll get used to it pretty quick. Climb up here and onto the next screen, where we're going to be heading over to the left side here. Wait for the giant yo-yo thing to kind of retract and then attack it so it freezes for a moment, and then you're able to go underneath of it without getting hit. Here we have another one of the mini-bosses. Do the same thing as we did before, watch out for the dives, backing away as they come down, and jump up into the air to deliver a couple of attacks. On the next screen, continue over to the right side, dealing with some more enemies. You can use these platforms to get around. In here, another one of those mini-bosses. You've probably gotten used to them by now. With the boss taken care of, head over to the right and head up. You could get some extra health and head down if you wanted to, but it's not worth it. Hitting. We have plenty of health items that we can get along the way. Head over to the left, watch out for the flames during this area. Try to get them to retract before heading underneath of them. Sometimes that can be difficult to do and you just gotta bite the bullet and take a little damage. No mini boss this time around though. We're just going to ignore most of the enemies above us here and just walk across the bottom. Even getting away from the little, like, mini-boss flying around. You can just ignore it and continue over to the right and climb on up. Here we're going to grab the springs and head over to the left. This is actually the end of the game here. We have the final boss coming up. Be very careful jumping over here with the arrows that are moving up and down as they will appear randomly, whether at the top or the bottom of the screen coming towards you. For the boss, I try to get some arrows to appear so that they disappear, and thus I have a little bit of time to attack the boss without having to worry about the projectiles or the arrows or the other enemies. Staying on this platform here and doing short jumps up every time that he ends up firing out is a nice way to at least be able to do damage to him. The bats are annoying, but I usually just let them hit me instead of trying to turn around and avoid them, and just keep focusing on the boss until he's taken care of. Once the boss is dropped, head over to the left, climb on up, and enjoy the ending to Jumping Kid.
So there you have it, Jumping Kid, a fun little platformer for the Famicom that unfortunately never made it over to North America. It's not amazing by any means, but it's an enjoyable little title. The ending, though, could be a little bit better. At least have the end or something else going on, but still, with that, it's going to wrap up this episode of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.